everybody, welcome to the Ed Tech Show. I'm Dan Spade, and today I'm talking to you about Jamboard. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Jamboard. Now, if you don't know what Jamboard is, it's one of Google's newest products. It is a physical digital whiteboard. However, there's also a software that goes with it, which is available in the G Suite. And I've been using it in my classroom, and the students love it. So today, I want to give you a quick overview and how I've been using it with my students. So to get to Google Jamboard, you can find it in your Google Apps if you scroll down. Or you can just type in jamboard.google.com. And once you get there to start a new jam, you click on this little plus sign in the bottom and it will open up a new jam for you. So like most Google products, you can click in the top left hand corner and rename your project. Now it's important to note that you can use the jam board on a computer, a mobile device. You can use it on the physical jam board itself. Uh, and the, depending on the device you're using, it's going to change the functionality of some of the menu items. So for instance, if you're using the pen or the marker, highlighter, paintbrush, uh, it's obviously going to be much easier to write on if you have a physical device or if you've got a stylus. Right now I'm using a mouse, so it's a little bit more difficult, but the kids seem to love it. Um, so you can see that depending on what you're using, uh, just like if you've ever used any kind of smart board or anything like that, it's very similar. Um, you can change the colors. So if you go down to the color tablet, you know, you can use blue, green, yellow, red, and then it just changes the color of the lines you're using. If you want to erase, you can click on the eraser or there's a great function. If you click on a little arrow, you can erase the whole board and clear the board. You can click on the select tool, which we'll get to in a second. And then one of the student's favorite functions is the sticky note. And by clicking on the sticky note, it opens up this little menu where you can type in whatever it is that you want to write. And you can decide if you want it to be a yellow sticky note, you can choose any of the colors, or if you just want to write on the board, you can make it clear. So I'll show you the difference. You know, this is a clear sticky note. And you can see once I select the select tool, I can move this around I can change the size of it by clicking on the edge. I can rotate it. Or I can click on the little uh, menus here where I can edit. I can duplicate if I want another one or I can just delete. So if I wanted to duplicate it, I can do that and move this. And now if I want to edit, I can change the color so I can turn it into a yellow sticky note. So it kind of looks like a post-it. And again, I can click that move it around. I can make it bigger or smaller and you can keep duplicating them, changing colors, uh, writing different things, however you want to do it. So let me clear the board so I can show you a couple other functions. One of the great things that Google just integrated is this add image. And when you click on that, it brings you right to a Google search. So if I was looking for something and this is what was really cool. I saw my students do this the other day um, is they typed in Venn diagram because they were doing a project and they were trying to create their own Venn diagram and they couldn't quite get it. So they went into the Google image search and they found a Venn diagram in there and they just made it the size of their board and then they filled it up with different sticky notes, which I just thought was an incredible use of the tool. Uh, so what they did was they just kind of made it big like this. And then they went and they created a bunch of post-its. And, you know, they did, you know, we'll just, just for the sake of this, we'll just put in a couple numbers here. And you can see they would then just move the post-its around so that they had what looked like their own Venn diagram. So the possibilities are endless. And that's one of the great things about this is if the students had this, like, all right, now we have to go on to the next thing. You can click up top here and create a new board by adding a frame. Now I've got a completely new fresh board. So you don't have to worry about like, you know, if you were actually collaborating, taking a picture of something uh, because I can go back and forth and start a whole new thing. And that's one of the great things. I can now start with a clear board. And if I want to keep adding to it, I can just go back into add image. And let's say we wanted to do something on Paris. I can type in Paris. 
or if I had pictures in my Google Drive, I could pull from my Google Drive or my Google Photos. But in this case, we're just gonna look for Paris. Uh, so we'll use this picture of the Eiffel Tower. We'll select, we'll bring it onto our jam. We'll move it around, you can make it bigger, smaller. You can write on the picture itself. So if I wanted to use, let's say, the pen, and I wanted to do it in red, you know, I can write on here, or I could, you know, draw images, kind of go over the two. And again, I can add more post-it notes. If I had the stylus, or if I was using a touch screen, I could write, write with my finger. Um, so the students can kind of go back and forth, or if you wanted to go to your previous one and see, you could go from frame to frame. And one of the really wonderful things that I love about this is like the Google products, I can share this out and people can be working on it in real time. And whether they're on a Mac, a PC, a tablet, they can collaborate and we can see what each other is doing. Uh, and again, that's just how Google continues to expand the possibilities of what's able to happen in your classroom or in business. Two more things that I love about Jamboards. The first is that it's like all Google products that it's constantly saving. So you never have to worry about losing any of your work or forgetting to save. The other thing that I really like a lot is in the top right hand corner next to the share button, uh, these three dots, if you click on it, it gives you the options to save the frame as an image. So if you just wanted this picture, um, you could take a picture of this screen um, or you could download it as a PDF. And this is super useful if you have students who are trying to submit this in Google Classroom or if you wanted to share this with other teachers or if you wanted to use like one of these frames in a presentation, say in a Google Slides, you could save it as an image and then insert it into that. So I showed you that you can go in between frames by clicking on these arrows. However, if you click on the expand frame bar, one of the options that you can do is by clicking on the top right hand corner is to duplicate the slide. So if you want to duplicate this slide that you already worked on so you can just make some modifications, clicking on duplicate will open up another slide that will give you the chance to operate on that one without affecting the first one. So as Google continues to update the Jamboard software, I'm excited to see where they're ultimately going with this. Now I shared with you a couple ways that my students are using this in the classroom. But if your students are using this, or if you have other ideas, please share them in the comment section below or tweet at me, at Dan Spada. And if you found this video to be helpful, please consider sharing it with friends, colleagues, or anybody who might find Jamboard to be a helpful tool. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And for more information, please visit DanielSpada.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.